Let's bring him up on stage, shall we? Adam. Awesome. Look at this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, joining us today are two great activists with the California Independence or Cal Exit movement, uh, Shankar and Hal Lore. And this is really exciting because the news broke just last week that there's a new Cal Exit initiative out. And there is a, a great effort now coming to fruition to actually put this to a vote uh, among California voters to see if they want to be independent from, uh, you know, orange mad, orange man, bad country, the rest of the, and, and for, you know, when, when I joke to, uh, to other Americans, like you wouldn't miss California if they just left the union or, fell off into the ocean would you i mean california politically has such a bad reputation with the rest of the country it's almost comical that you're not going to get any resistance from the rest of us at this point but before we get into this this exciting news um if, if you would start how uh please if you would quickly just introduce yourself how you got involved with this movement and and why you think it, it's an important cause right now okay and hello, Adam. It's good to see you again. Likewise. <laughs> um, um, I became, I involved, became involved with the movement with the about, movement about um, um, uh, back, in uh, back in 2016. Um, um, I started, I from, the started from the ground up. Hold on a second. Like, 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 we have Mark is going to join us also, but I think we're going to have a review on your mic. Marcus, if you could get into StreamYard and maybe adjust your audio or at least mute yourself while we're talking, we'll give you the last intro here. Right, in our right, right, right. So, back to you, please, Hal. Um, can you hear me now? <laughs> Perfect. <Go ahead>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I started with the movement uh, back in 2016. Uh, the first... The first actual uh, Cal exit thing I did was to march on in the um, downpour of the day after Trump was elected. Um, we were there. We were there <laughs> marching, marching in downtown LA, uh, carrying our California flags and talking about Cal exit <sighs> in a downpour that was so bad. My the money in my wallet got wet. So I've been, <laughs> we've been, and ever since then, um, for the last four years, I started off with tables and doing boothing and marching and the women's march and, 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 and. <laughs> so yeah, I, I've been with the movement for four years and I think I've done just about everything in it you can so far. Awesome. Shankar? Hey, what's up, Adam? Marcus, uh, good to see you finally made it, buddy. Um, sa same question, right, Adam? Uh, uh, how'd I get into it? Uh, I Please. think it was when um, uh, 2016, Bernie lost, and, and, and Hillary was the only one left, and I, like most of the country, could not stand her, so uh, looked for different alternatives, found the uh, California National Party, and then they weren't really doing anything, really. I mean, what can you do when you're not really qualified as a party? Your hands are kind of tied. But there was this group called Yes California that was actually doing something. They had an initiative out that wanted uh, secession, independence. And so uh, I signed up uh, and uh, met Marcus and uh, got into it and been in it since then. I mean, uh, been doing it since uh, 2016, so four years now. Awesome. Well, it must be pretty exciting for those of you who have been doing this for a long time to, to be getting to this kind of breakthrough. Yeah. So, Marcus, uh, thank you for joining us. Marcus Ruiz Evans, I, I've known for a few years uh, through this movement and, and all the work that he's done for California independence. Marcus, uh, you want to start with uh, explaining this breaking news from last breaking week? Breaking news from last, last week and the front yeah, uh, today's really about introducing to the world the people that are going to really be leading the charge on the ground, grassroots movement-wise, and reaching out to Californians, which is independent California. And you're meeting the top two leaders of that group. But real quick, just to let everybody get a little bit of background, uh, CalExit, Yes, California, and 
most of the board of Independent California, and you're looking at two of the signers there, signed a petition a few months ago for California to secede. The petition would put a vote in front of the public asking, do you want to leave America? Now, it's not legally uh, a mechanism that causes secession, but under international legal precedent, it would start the ball rolling because every country that's had a plebiscite or basically a public poll uh, officially taken by the government has rocketed that country towards more independence, even if that poll isn't technically legal. The other thing the initiative does is that it forms a blue ribbon panel. Uh, California has investigations all the time on all sorts of issues, uh, autism, uh, hair salons, et cetera. And they go, California's government is going to get together a bunch of experts and they're going to say, here's the problem and here's how you fix it if you want. And they give that report to the legislature. This blue ribbon panel, the report would be available for everyone in California. And it would be a collection of professors, experts, you name it, called in front of the assembly and given professional testimony, just like a congressional hearing people may have seen with the, uh, on, you know, on TV. This will be here in California. It would be televised and it would produce a report three months before the vote for California to secede. So experts say, here's our report on how we could secede if you really wanted to do it. A few months later, you're actually going to have a vote. So we're going to have an educated public looking at the report on how to do this and then taking a vote. And we think that's going to be everything it takes to go because uh, the time, the climate's right. How Laura really could talk about how things are different now than they were before. But the other part of it is that uh, Scotland had a blue ribbon panel in 2010, 2009. And although that country isn't fully independent, that one government investigation basically permanently concretized inspiration in Scotland to continually push for secession. It was called the Coleman Commission. And once they had that report and it said, yeah, you could do it by experts and approved by the government. It said it was gonna to be tough. It said there was all sorts of difficulties, but it said you could do it. And it was the government issuing a report backed by experts. That changed the game in Scotland. We're hoping to recreate that here in California. I'm gonna be quiet. Really, it's about building chapters because if you wanna get involved and you wanna help CalExit, you need to join a chapter, you need to start a chapter, you need to help to get involved. IC is gonna run you all through that. Yes, is always gonna be here. We're doing the media, we're getting attention, and we'll be doing a little bit of help with the petition, but I see really is the ground game. And Adam, I gotta point out, that's not my opinion. International News has recognized Independent California as the grassroots partner to Yes California. Uh, mm. International mm. News has already called them out on that. They already have that title, and they're already recognized by the 160,000 members here in CalExit. Um, as basically leading the grassroots game. I'm, I'm going to be quiet. Really, it's about Hal and Shankar. They can tell you most of the information you want to know, uh, Adam. All right. All right. Well, thank well, you, Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. 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 Now, I, the next question I, I, I want to ask, and you know, whoever wants to take this, I've been a little bit confused on the timing of this as, a, as, as coming to, to a vote or referendum. Before we get into the, you know, what people can do and the, the bigger conversation context in which this is happening what is the timing and, and what is the mechanism of this, of this. When, when when does it come to a vote you want to take that i'll take that one go for it Marcus, oh okay um well <laughs> Uh, the mechanism the mechanism for the creation of the commission will be 2024. Um, as, it sits, as it sits right now, that would be when the referendum would be going on to the, or when it's listed as going on to the ballot. So this is this is a long term plan. I mean, this is not this is not an easy effort. This is not gather petition signatures and then we get to vote on it. It's not as easy as the government of California would have us believe. Right. Oh, but by no means. Um, well, we are talking about basically the peaceful secession of California from the United States. Probably the biggest, the biggest lift politically <laughs> you can possibly imagine. Um, so no, so yeah, it's going to take time. It, it will take time to accomplish it. I mean, 
Where well, this, it, is, this strikes me as the kind of thing that is it, kind of like cannabis decram or legalization exactly. as a matter of voting. Exactly. You, you, you first go through this massive effort politically to get it on the ballot and people vote on it and it passes or, or fails, but usually it fails the first time, but that's enough to start the conversation. And then you see the trend. Right. Like here in Arizona, we had uh, recreational cannabis on the ballot last election and it failed by a few points. We see it coming this November and you go, yeah, it's going to pass this time. And yes. I, I feel like with, with California, like, and this is, I mean, I, 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 I'm excited because in, in, in my worldview, being able to make government actually consensual as opposed to coercive is, is the most important thing to advance humanity. If you can't be forced into a system, then you have the right to opt out. And what I'm doing here as a micro nation declaring our sovereignty with Gardenia is, is the sort of bottom up answer, you know, running for president to say we can dissolve the Fed and everybody secede at once by states is the top down answer. But with California independence, we see a really unique breaking point that seems more likely to succeed than any of these other efforts. And in a way that would clear the path for everybody who wants to declare independence, either as a community, a county, a city, or a state to be able to do that. So four years before this gets to the voters in California, and it, it requires a lot of work to get to that point and keep this effort going. So to what Marcus said about organizing with local chapters, if anybody watching this is in California, please, please, please get involved with this, sign up, it, at very least in a, in a symbolic way, be a member of this, join. If you can be actively involved spreading this message, make sure that the first points on the board, even if it's not till 2024, are high enough that we say, I mean, if we, if, and this could win in 24. Yes. And, and I, yeah. I, I hate to say, I hate to say this, but it actually kind of makes me want Trump to win. I, I shouldn't say it that way. If Trump wins, one silver lining <laughs> is that a br bunch of people in California are going to be like, oh my God, can we just opt out of this thing right now? And I think that's going to add a lot of fuel to the fire to use a very inappropriate metaphor for what California is dealing with right now. But to, uh, but to, to go to, let's go to Shankar next. Shankar, with, with this bigger debate, how has the conversation shifted in recent years as a result of the work that, that people in your organizations have done? Sure, sure. You know, just before you, you mentioned marijuana and just to let you know, I mean, 1996, I was out on in Huntington Beach and in, in Long Beach gathering signatures for medical decriminalization. 96. So that was that's when they first started the marijuana. And then every four years or every two years, I'm talking every election cycle, they were out there. Marijuana, medical marijuana decriminalized. It it hit us every cycle. It was always on the ballot and always failed. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it failed all the way up until 2014 when it passed. And because we we talked to the marijuana people, we're like, what did you guys do different? How did you how did you how did you turn it around? And it's education. The public doesn't know anything about marijuana. All they know is what they've been taught from the, from from what we've all been conditioned to, and a series of commercials, uh, some polls, and boom, it passed unanimously. So uh, they've uh, kind of set up uh, a guide, kind of of how to do it. I the. The time frame is is a long. I mean, it took them twenty years to get uh, marijuana legal in California. But uh, we're in. I'm in it that long. I know Hal's in it that long. Marcus is in for sure. And and to answer your question, actually, you know, before I answer your question, this this will help answer that question. Can all of your your viewers like comment on the section of how much they love California or how much they hate California? I want to hear how much you guys hate California. <laughs> really, quick. I'm sure there's not a lot of Californians listening to this. So I want to hear all the hate. That you can possibly dish out. How much? How much do you hate us? I mean, do we? Are we take? I mean, are we ripping your guns away? Are we? Uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we? Uh, are we sending some more Mexicans over? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what it is, but but yeah, I've, so I've heard I've heard the plethora. What's that? Sh Sh if, if if I may, then before you get to the bigger conversation question here, this suggests yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, a very intriguing strategy 
that, you know, I think of for libertarians fighting the duopoly, uh, where like if, if you're a Republican and you, you don't care about California being part of the United States, you really need to be supporting this effort because it would guarantee yeah. Republican rule yeah. in Washington for like yeah, if, if all the folks stable, yeah. right? And California leaves the union, you're going to have a, a dominant Republican Party in Washington for decades. Now, of course, we know there are other factors involved, but you want to guarantee at least for the next few cycles a Republican president, as a, if you're really afraid of Biden. You want an end run around fighting the duopoly bullshit? Hey, let's just get rid of California and you get rid of tens of millions of Democrat voters. But I, I have to point this out to my audience every time this comes up because there's there's some skepticism. You know, Adam, if California goes independent, it's so liberal, it's going to go more big government and the people of California are going to suffer under a bigger California you know, socialist system. And that's absolutely counterfactual. If you just look at the logic that applies to the situation, if you're a, a conservative, excuse me, or a libertarian in California, if you're any kind of fiscal conservative or someone who wants smaller, gov less government spending, you, you, you resent being taxed for socialist programs that are wasteful and destructive and so on. You should still be supporting this because the California state government as a socialist institution is more vicious and wasteful as a result of being part of the federal government. And in its socialism is at least going to be able to be a lot more accountable and efficient and humane. And you Absolutely. are going to have a more libertarian governance experience if California is independent from the big socialist communist fascist institution known as the u.s federal government so it, when, when you're reaching out to people shankar it's not just organizing californians it's really people all over the country and I, I would dare say i mean even internationally like this is this is you pull the thread right pull a big thread on the sweater of the evil of government a lot of shit's going to unravel if you're against the american military empire you should be supporting california asserting its right to be independent right so, Absolutely. Shankar, reaching out to people, how, how does all of this help you build the organization? Build hey, the man, organization. you touched on a couple key points there. Um, uh, you're absolutely right. Um, people would think it'd be bigger government. Uh, uh, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be. In fact, we can even um, curtail our laws so it's not one size fit all. We can even make laws per county. Uh, just like how we have it in states right now. I mean, it would it would suit the community that they live in. Uh, the mm -hmm. laws, it, it, this idea of 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 of, of one, because we've got farmers in the east that that hate our gun control laws. It doesn't make sense for them, and and so for them, you know, they can have what they want uh, as far as, as as what firearms they need to protect themselves or for for hunting or whatever they need. They can have it. Orange County, if it, you know, they they want to ban Uzis on all firearms, and you go to prison for it. Let them go ahead. That's my vision. That's how I see California, where each community kind of makes the rules uh, for, for itself. Um, and globally speaking, globally speaking, it, in 2017, uh, we were approached by three states in Brazil that want to take a look at our initiative for, for independence. And we were like, mm. three states in Brazil are going to go, are going to leave the big, large state. And, uh, you know, in talking with them and researching, you find out that these three states are the are the are the producers for that state and they had paid the most taxes to the, to the country, Brazilian like, dang. And all this is around mm. the time of, so Catalonia, the Spanish independence movement. Yes. And, and that was a peaceful, peaceful uh, independence uh, movement. And it turned absolutely violent. And this is my one fear. It turned absolutely violent because the police, they didn't, they were actually, government of Spain was cool with independent, with Catalonia. And it wasn't until the EU got involved that the police came down and it rained. They arrested all the head of, of the Catalonia independence movement. They're all in jail right now. They're going through hearings right now. Um, but they don't have a constitution of the United States like, like we do. And what happened over there, I hope it stays over there. But here, what we're trying to do here is exactly the same thing as what the founding fathers of the United States did. And it's for the exact same reasons. Um, 
you could say taxes, but it, it taxation without representation. I mean, what we're trying to do in California is more American than most Americans can imagine. It's 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 essential freedom and independence. It's it's the founding principles of of uh, of, of the United States uh, since it's been lost in what it is today. But um, uh, yeah, global solidarity with the movements in Hong Kong, uh, with all with the indigenous, with uh, all over the world, uh, Spain, Brazil. I mean, uh, everybody's fighting for their for their for their autonomy, for their independence, man. And um, and California, everybody knows us because we're such a powerful state. We're such a big state. We uh, we're just a global dominant powerhouse that they're all looking at Cal Exit uh, to see uh, how, how we do it. So. Yeah, and just to be clear, we have a couple different organizations working together, but the general calling together, bringing a, a, everyone into one effort is the CalExit hashtag, right? So, Marcus, right. I, I want to go back to yes. Marcus. If you could explain uh, a little bit about the, the different organizations and how you're working together. But also, Shankar raised uh, an, an interesting point here about the customization, that in, in California declaring independence, there would be uh, a new acknowledgement of localization, of desire for counties to set their own policy and that they'd be more capable of doing so. I guess if they're only fighting the California state federal or state government now, the federal government of California and not the federal government of the United States as well. Are you concerned that when this succeeds that counties might want to break off and be independent also? <laughs> no. Can we go to Marcus on this one? Can we go yeah, to Marcus on this answer. one? Let, let yeah. Hal answer that, and then I'll, I'll answer your questions, Adam. But Hal has um, a pretty good answer to that one, and then I'll, I'll answer uh, everything you well, said, Adam. The, the, simple, the simple answer is smaller, more direct government that is more, that is more responsive to local needs, it would that's part of the part of the hallmark of California of the California independence movement. So, um, you will have a having more accessible government, smaller, more accessible government is is better in general, whether you're right, left, or center, than having to, than having a government that's two thousand five hundred miles away that doesn't listen at all. Yeah, I, I would think that that's a great point of unity around this issue that even, you know, among leftists, and I, I think libertarians uh, and conservatives, and I, 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 I throw up in my mouth a little bit every time I have to associate libertarians with conservatives, but as people who are not liberals looking at liberals, uh, you know, we, we tend to assume that they don't care about big government because they want big government programs in certain areas. But still, most of them don't want runaway big government. They don't want wasteful government. They right. don't want people in a far off capital interfering with what they want for local socialism or, or leftist policies. And, and that really is something why one of the core reasons I believe that the path to a voluntary society is through localization, through respecting autonomy of, of communities setting their own policy. So, Marcus? Just a couple facts to back up everything you said. Calix is a thoroughly libertarian idea. Let's get that straight. Uh, Adam, when you came out to our unity conference, you were the only person representing a political party at all. You were invited. Everyone loved you. They knew you were libertarian. We also had another libertarian candidate for governor come on, and he also did very well. We also had five libertarian chapters in California have conferences on CalExit before we ever got big. We also went last year, and Shankar and Hal are on video talking to libertarians at the official national convention last year in Los Angeles, and they are doing wonderful. It's on video. We're just explaining the points, and five different people from the movement went down there, had five different conversations, and all came back with, wow, when I just start talking about our points, libertarians eating up. It's on video. Like, we had different people go to different parts of the convention. Everywhere they went, there was libertarians picking up what we're talking about. And obviously you, sir, and obviously Governor Wildstar, but there's a lot of libertarian ideas to this for this reason. Hal's right. Um, we do want more 
and Shankar, there will be more accountability um, at the local level. So in California, whenever they say, hey, I want X done, the first thing Sacramento says, oh, there's so many laws and the feds won't let us do it. Hmm. That's their go-to excuse. That would be white. Oh. So, hey, Zach, you have no one to blame but yourself. I expect you to get it done. That, they use that excuse all the time. It will be gone. You want to talk about accountability, there's no more straw man from the point out. Secondly, 50% of our regulations are federal. If 50% of our regulatory climate is wiped out, every business person I've talked to says, that's awesome. That's one of the best business booms, pro-business things you could ever do that I've ever heard of in California. I'm an ex-Republican. I left because they could not support California values. I didn't leave because I fundamentally don't believe in lower taxes and regulations uh, being within a reasonable level. California would stop losing federal income taxes. We would have 50% of our federal bureaucracy gone. The boogeyman Sacramento can point to to say, don't hold us for accountability would be wiped out. There's nothing but more increased accountability here. Now to get at your question about smaller states, uh, I was on the show with Marcus Poulos and a couple other libertarians last week. And they asked the same question you did, Adam. There is interest in the movement in states, as Hal said, or Shankar, states within a nation. Right now, Jefferson and some other areas don't get enough coverage. They don't get enough love from Sacramento. Everybody knows that. But there's disagreement exactly on how to handle that. There does seem to be wide support in the Calexit movement that if California was a nation, you could have maybe five states and each of those places would get a governor who gets to call the, uh, the new president, former governor, directly. That would give Jefferson and other people a level of accountability at decision-making process in Sacramento they've never had anything like before. Now, to the idea that separate counties could vote to leave, while I personally believe that's fair, I gotta point out that whenever Californians were polled in the last 10 years about splitting up California, it was like 65, 75% said, hell no. So there is no love in California for splitting this up, regardless of what Jefferson and anybody says. Tim Draper tried doing it twice. The polling came out overwhelmingly. Three-fourths were like, hell no. Also, if you secede, counties don't exist legally. Neither do cities. So the American government took over California, which was independent from Mexico, until 1846. So California already existed. The American government absorbed it. But there's nothing in the Constitution, there's no paperwork saying that counties exist. Counties and cities exist because California says they do. So there's no, no legal mechanism to get, bring the vote down to the county level. D would it be fair? Sure. Is there a legal mechanism for that? No. Is there any support for doing that? No. That's just the way Californians feel. But it would be more accountability. I do, if I could real quick, I just want to point out a few things. Hal and Shankar are being too modest. So look at these guys, okay? Type in independent California getting in front of Trump supporters. Type in independent California physically standing between Antifa and Trump supporters so that the yells and screams and blows came on IC and not Antifa. Type in IC harassing ICE officials and leading Latinos who are undocumented in a parade with a mariachi band pissing off LAPD because they took their constitutional right to an ICE director's house. Type in independent California on television, leading a 100 foot long space of the gay pride parade in San Diego. They've been on ABC, NBC, CBS, LA, San Diego TV, harassing ICE, getting into it with Trump supporters, backing up LGBTQ, you name it. These are basically the bad boys of CalExit. They're wearing all black. Look at them. I came in a suit. These are the guys yeah. that people go, damn, that's pretty hardcore. If you have any question about that, that's Shankar Singham as seen on Tucker Carlson. He was the guy that told Tucker Carlson to go F himself, basically. And he had a million views. So know who you're talking to. Antifa knows these people. Barrio Unidos, Barrio Logan, uh, you know, La Gente de Califia. They know about these guys. They know how. They know Shankar. How was literally directing uh, Antifa and uh, the resist movement on how not to get arrested by the cops when the Trump supporters were coming over into them? They brought a tent, they brought water, they brought organization. So ask around LA, these guys are radical, but they're smart. 
and they're better organized. And that's why Yes California specifically sought to reach out to them. Now, real quick, I got to point something out, Adam. You're talking about why the climate is different now. I want to point a couple things out. Jim Wonderman is head of the Bay Area Council. That's the 100, 500 top businesses in the Bay Area, Silicon Valley. So all the richest people in the Bay Area, Jim Wonderman's president of their coalition. He spent an hour requesting to talk to us about this initiative. So one of the 100 most connected people in all of California said, can we spend an hour talking about your initiative? Mike Feinstein is the co-founder of the Green Party, former mayor of Santa Monica, also well-connected. He spent 15 hours working on improving our initiative and making sure that the voting pool was independent of political corruption. We finally got that in. Additionally, Steve Chesson for Californians for Electoral Reform looked at this initiative. And finally, Mr. Weinberg, CEO of California Forward, a formal think tank, also looked at this initiative. But it doesn't stop there. Newsweek on 9-11. Newsweek on 9-11 said CalExit could happen if Trump's elected. On 9-11, Newsweek magazine thought it would be a good idea to say CalExit could happen if Trump's elected. The UK newspaper that mentioned that independent California is the grassroots leader also said the same thing. And Kreitner, uh, Richard Kreitner has a book out. He argued with Sank Ugar of the Young Turks to admit that California could secede. So the Young Turks basically had a show where Kreitner came on and argued Sank Ugar to a standstill and Sank Ugar had to go, uh, but, 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 well, Okay, well, I'm out of objections. That's how the show ended, and Kreitner ended with, yeah, California could secede. Finally, if you have Netflix, watch the show The Politician. There's a $2 million production quality commercial for five minutes called Why California Should Secede. It's at the first episode of second season of The Politician on Netflix starring Gwyneth Paltrow. And for five minutes, she pretends to be a governor candidate best lighting, full production value, as much money as you could dump into commercial ever. And she says, let's secede. And literally took all of our talking points, like divorce. Wow, so wow. what does it mean when people who founded political parties, people who call the governor and he picks up, political reform experts, politicians, famous Hollywood actors, <laughs> and, and famous political commentators are all saying <laughs> Alex, it could happen. Really <laughs> what does that say to you, Adam? Oh, yeah. This, oh, yeah. Has momentum. this is undeniable. And, and I got to hand it to the three of you and, and everybody else who's worked with your organization, everybody who I met at that conference in California who was put in the effort to get you guys to this point where I think you have uh, uh, you have reached a critical mass of momentum in the current political landscape where this is going to come to a vote eventually now, the, the sooner the better. Uh, let's check in with our audience real quick. We only have a few minutes left. Lenny, any any critical questions or, or burning comments on the issue of CalExit? Uh, no, Ima Status wants to know, though, who has the Modelo virus. Um, that's <laughs> coughing in the background. And, so, a while, and a while back, she said, uh, LASD is out of control. Don't march in yeah, LA they are. today. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, so I, uh, I, don't, I don't know if we have time to get into Adam, all of that, but I, certainly, go ahead. Hey, yeah, man, I just want to say, man, I, I saw I saw uh, uh, the first 10 minutes of your debate with Vosh, man, and oh my God, I, I, I so I, I saw the debate with Vosh against uh, uh, Stephen Melanieu, and I was like, okay, I'm smarter than Stephen Melanieu. Dude, I was listening to you guys' debate, and I'm like, oh my God, I, I think I'm a dummy. You guys were so intense, man. I mean, I have to like rewind and play again to listen back at the at your vernacular, the terms you were using. I, I mean, it was pretty intense. I haven't finished watching it. I can't wait to go back and watch it, man. Great. I I can't wait to to find out the ending of how you guys uh because you guys are almost on similar minds, man. Uh, uh, it's, he's a libertarian socialist. Uh, uh, you're libertarian. I mean, I I can't wait to see the rest of it, man. I only got the first few minutes. But I just want to—I just want to see, uh, let you know that too, man. But uh, uh, good job arguing with Bosch, bro. Oh, and one more thing. Well, thank you. Uh, the uh, the uh, Marcus was mentioning the raid at the ice house. So look, when 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 we did that, we went to we went to the regional director's house, his home in Los Alamitos, and no one was doing that at the time. 
And we went there with mariachi band and, and a taco truck and 50 people in, at seven in the morning on a Sunday. And it worked. It worked. The guy moved. Uh, he's, he's not there anymore. The neighbors are pissed. Uh, everything worked. That concept of going to people's homes has caught like wildfire across this state. I think across the country. I'm not sure. But in California, everybody's doing it now. If you're mad at your city councilman, go. they go to their home. If they're mad at, their, at your local garbage man, they go, they go to the, guy, the people's home. And you know what? I mean, it, it, they're thinking about making a law, making, making that illegal. But that's holding these people's feet <laughs> to the fire. They are elected officials. And you have to do that. You have to, to go and question them when, when you don't like what they're doing. I mean, it's, 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 it's what this, this land is all about, man. I mean, uh, uh, and, and I'm glad that we set that example up. We haven't done it since uh, just because our board of directors is worried about, I don't know. Just, well, actually, just worried. Shane lawyers, Carter, what, you, what can you say? It would, it would be more American to take these corrupt officials and tar and feather them. I mean, historically yes. speaking, <laughs> let's make tax collectors birds again. But I, I hope it doesn't come to that point. I, I joke, tar and feathering is is a is a is a way to kill somebody. Um, but the fact that we're we're going, oh my gosh, you're going to people's houses. They're coming to our houses with their policy. Mm -hmm. I say we get right back in their faces and hold them directly accountable. Mm -hmm. You guys escalating with that tactic in a nonviolent but confrontational way, I think is is beautiful. So, you know, we've only got a couple minutes. I want to give you guys a chance to, uh, you know, to give your final pitch for, for how and why people should get involved, what websites to go to. So let's go, Hal, Shankar, and, and, and then Marcus to wrap this up. Hal? Okay. Um for those wishing to get involved, uh, go to www.independentca.org. That's www.independentca.org. Um, California, California, the California that is independent is good for California and it's good for the rest of America. It means that America can finally get past the divisive politics that's tearing it apart. And it means that California does not have to does not have to put up with a two party system in America that either basically is hostile to California or simply doesn't care. So anybody wishing to wishing to help us here in California to become independent. Uh, yes. What we're looking for is come join Independent California. Again, www.independentcalifornia.org. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hal. Shankar. That's my best infomercial. I can. That's... <laughs> Shankar, go ahead, please. I think Shankar's muted. Uh oh. Now we... There you go. How's that? You guys yeah. hear me? All right. Gotcha. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah, good, good, good. Uh, so, uh, absolutely. Uh, how how just said uh, how to how to get a hold of us? If uh, listen, the people that you put in power, the people that you put up and up and up to go to Washington, uh, even your governors. If if you think they're beholden to you, if you think they care about your community, they don't. There's a big. They are smaller fish in a huge pond, and that's who they're beholden to. Our pod. Our, I don't like Nancy. I'm not a Nancy Pelosi fan. I don't like a boxer. I don't like the same people you don't like over here. Because they don't do anything for us. We don't even like them. We don't know how these people get elected still. There's a small group in there of their constituency that, that keeps voting for them. But these people aren't beholden. They don't care to us. They're beholden to, the United, to, to Washington, D.C. and what happens over there. And if Californians really want to see the necessary change to take place in their own communities, look, go to the, go to Independent California website. Check it out. Read our platform. Go to Yes, California. Check it out. Look at the platform. Look at what we're about. And if you disagree with anything on there, I I would be amazed. Um, if you agree, though, sign up, be a member, and uh, and and help us out. Help us help you out. That's all I gotta say. Beautiful. And finally, Marcus Ruiz Evans, your last thoughts on this subject for today, please take us home, brother. Facebook, yescalifornia.org, Yes California on Twitter. Our Twitter page is actually really active, so I would highly recommend check out the Yes California Twitter. It's blowing up. Uh, we got Calixit to be the seventh top trending word on Twitter about two months ago. 
So a lot of action there. But yes, California Facebook, 40,000 people. YesCalifornia.org will have copies of the petition on the website today. And there will be a mass email coming out uh, later this evening with the petition. One thing I got to leave everybody with is 55%. So the news goes on and says, oh, yeah, 2017, a third of Californians were for secession. That must mean two thirds were against. That is a straight up misleading statistic. If you look mm -hmm. at Stanford and Reuters, two different agencies, mm -hmm. what they actually said was 47.5 percent were willing to talk about this. That's not two thirds against. That's half saying, no, I'm not sure. And they basically damn near half saying, yeah, I'm willing to look into it. Here's the thing, Reuters and Stanford, February 2017, 47.5, 46%, both willing to look into this. They undercounted Latinos 200% and overcounted elderly white people 50%. When you actually match uh -huh. the surveys for Reuters and, uh, Ips uh -huh. Reuters and Stanford, February 2017 to the actual demographics, it's 55% of Californians, February 2017, Reuters and Stanford, yes, it's in the data, 55% said they're willing to look. That's above the Brexit threshold to legally secede that they just had and the international world accepted. Guys, you're doing incredible Guys, you're work. Doing Congratulations for making it to this point. This is very exciting. I am a little worried for your, your movement and your cause, though. If, if Trump wins in November or December, or January, or whenever they give up recounting the ballots, you are going to have a huge influx of support and interest for this movement from Californians who realize that they're stuck in a federal system that doesn't represent them. For those of us who are thinking about the bigger principles and politics of this, we can celebrate this already, but even what we see happening with the bigger dynamics because you have created a vessel for the sentiment of the masses when it comes aligned with this very shortly here, I think you're going to be overwhelmed with support from people who are just finally fed up and seeing that applying localization in this way is good for everybody. So thank you for doing this work of, of all the political initiatives in the world today. This is one that I, I think I'm more excited about than, than anything else. Uh, and and I, I can't thank you guys enough for doing this work. So uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And I encourage everybody to go to independentca.org and, and be a part of it. Thank you, Adam. All thank right. you, Adam. Uh, Thank you, gentlemen. All right, so let's uh, let's go back to our audience here. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up. We're a little bit over time here. Uh, Lenny, do you have anything, any any burning comments before we get to our sort of news roundup, wrap up, and then uh, the good news on this day in history? Good news? No, not really. Everyone's pretty quiet on the comments. I'm sure they can find their answers at those uh, websites that you mentioned. People were asking uh, if their dual citizenship was a possibility if you're born in California but don't live there. And then would the federal government really let this happen? Is it a possibility? I don't think they'd be able to stop it if it comes to that. All right. Well, so uh, yeah. I don't know. I guess we, is J Jim, are you paying attention? We still got our guests on here. Um, <laughs> but if you guys want to respond to that while you're still here. Uh, uh, briefly. Yeah. Briefly. The, uh, the real question goes, will the federal government allow it? It's kind of a case of. Do we, even know the federal, do we even know what the, what the federal government is going to look like by January? I mean, how, how functional a federal government do we have now? How, are, how able now are they to respond? It's like come January, yeah. when they're going to come January after this election. I mean, half, I, the country's not, half the country's not going to accept the results. Yeah, so, I think when... Sorry? No, so... Who's gonna, who's gonna be arguing against this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think we we've come to this beautiful point in, in human history where, you know, we're we're at least capable of organizing these kinds of votes. And when the public will cannot be denied or distorted in in some way, 
they're going, it, it, they, they can't stop the policy that goes along with that. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Jim, Jim, get him off stage so we can wrap up here. Is my producer paying attention right now? Thanks, guys. Y'all are awesome. All right, there we go.